That's enough. These two. Not okay. Hugh Jackman's final run at Wolverine is one of the highlights of 2017 and maybe even in the conversation for best comic book movie ever. But the genre matching tale of redemption has its roots in 2009's Old Man Logan run by Mark Millar. I'm Clint Gage. And I'm Laura Prudham. And without further ado and no restraint on spoilers, it's time to ask, what's the difference, old man? Logan? First of all, Logan wasn't really adapted from Old Man Logan per se. While Mark Millar was reportedly brought in to consult on the film, narratively they have very little in common aside from some broad stroke elements. But the thematic resemblance is undeniable. And hey, fans love Old Man Logan, so why not lean into it a little? First up, the broad stroke narrative elements. Both Old Man Logan and the film Logan are set in the future. The future in which the comics are set is a post-apocalyptic wasteland, more reminiscent of Mad Max than anything else. It's a world where the bad guys have won. Supervillains, working together en masse, have straight up murdered all the superheroes and divided the world amongst themselves. Yay! Going by the name of Logan, the titular old timer has a wife and two kids, trying to live peacefully as a farmer, just trying to pay rent in Hulkland, near what used to be Sacramento. In the movie though, Logan is set in the not too distant future of 2029. It's nowhere near the hellscape vision of the future in the comics, but is bleak in its own way. With corporate greed run amok and criminals emboldened enough to murder in the streets, the world of the film is clearly one in decline. Logan himself is also clearly in decline. Scarred, gray-haired, and limping, he's being poisoned by a constant stream of booze and pills as well as the adamantium grafted to his bones leaching into his system. He spends his days driving a limo and bouncing back and forth across the border to Mexico where he's got an aging Professor X hidden away. The new case of Lupa from Jack Hobel. It's the next big thing. Go now, Wilson. Which brings up another broad difference, just who exactly is left. Charles Xavier isn't in the comics at all. In fact, in the books, most every superhero you've heard of is dead, and in Ant-Man's case, still just laying there. The cast of characters is extensive in Old Man Logan. Obviously, Marvel can write whoever they want into the pages of their comics without needing to pay anyone. Hence you get Hawkeye, who is a blind and grizzled, Christopherson-esque badass, hiring Logan to drive him cross-country a trip that sees Daredevil and Punisher get eaten by dinosaurs, and ultimately, Logan fighting Red Skull, who is wearing Captain America's uniform, before flying back to Hulkland in Iron Man's armor. So yeah, basically everybody shows up. And just as obviously in the film, Fox only has the rights to the X-Men universe. So it's Logan and Charles driving cross country with a little girl who's been cloned from Logan's DNA by a company called Transgen that was specifically made up for the movie. So to recap, similarities are Logan is old, heroes are gone, bad guys are winning, road trip. And Logan's got a little X scar on his forehead that seems straight from Old Man Logan. And yeah, there are little cyborg looking dudes that seem to have inspired the bad guys from the movie. Sure, yeah, those things too, but that's basically where it ends. All of the details you find looking any closer than that are very different. So that's it. End of episode. Not even a little bit. What makes Logan and Old Man Logan an interesting case study in adaptations is how they're negative images of each other. The movie essentially reversed many of the choices made in the comics, while still dealing with the same things. The DNA is the same, but the details are polar opposites. For example, the Logan of Old Man Logan is a pacifist. He hasn't popped his claws in 50 years. He even willingly takes a beating from inbred hillbilly Hulk offspring for not paying his rent on time. Over and over again, he refuses to fight. He's broken and truly no longer Wolverine. The Logan in the movie, though, is violent as hell killing a whole pack of dudes because they're trying to steal his car, stabbing all these dudes in the face. For a guy who'd spent 17 years with razor sharp claws but never being allowed to hack and slash in PG-13 movies, he's really making up for lost time in this one. So in that way, he's also truly no longer the Wolverine. At least not the one we've come to know over the years in the movies. There's also a tragic backstory that's fundamentally changed Logan in both mediums. In the comics, he was brainwashed into murdering all of his friends. A villain named Mysterio made it appear to Wolverine that a group of supervillains was descending on the X-Mansion, and while he didn't know what he was doing, slicing up all his teammates made him mm, kind of swear to never hurt another living soul. In the movie, mutants are dying out. None have been born in decades, and even Logan's healing factor is failing him. There was also an incident in Westchester alluded to, but never explicitly explained, where apparently Charles was responsible for the deaths of most of the X-Men. Now Logan is keeping him doped up and hidden away so that Charles will never hurt another living soul. 
This idea of protecting the present from his past is really at the heart of both the books and the movie. Old Man Logan is just trying to live quietly and ignore his violent past, tending to his family and his land. Oh. But when he needs money to make rent, it's the past he's trying to ignore that shows up, giving him the opportunity to make ends meet. Which, by the way, is basically the plot of Unforgiven. Which, also by the way, is possibly referenced right here? Movie Logan, meanwhile, is also just trying to stay under the radar, saving up cash to buy a boat that he and Charles can literally sail away on. But in the movie, his past is represented by a literal clone of himself. X-23, or Laura, is an experimental weapon made from his own genetic material. <laughs> But the idea of the X-Men and Wolverine's past is played differently in each as well. In the movie, the X-Men have been relegated to actual comics. Because mutants have been quietly disappearing, their heroics have turned into historical fantasy. You do know they're all bullshit, right? Maybe a quarter of it happened, and not like this. In the books, though, the history of superheroes has been written by the villains that defeated them. Handy. Logan's own daughter brings up rumors her friend's mom talks about, saying how Pa used to be a hero on some kind of team before the bad guys took over. So both the books and the movie present a murky understanding of what Logan really used to be, with only his version of events being the most reliable. The point here is, in both versions, Wolverine from the past is confronting Logan in the present. The difference lies in what Logan does next. By the end of the film, Logan has been given a clear reminder of what he is in the form of both Laura as X-23 and the mindless rage monster X-24. His journey is one of literally protecting the physical embodiment of his good nature from the physical embodiment of the fury that's always driven him. The death left in the wake of this conflict, with Charles and an innocent family just quietly trying to make a living on a farm, Ahem. Sounds familiar. Also reminds him that he can't escape the things he's done. A point made eloquently in the film by a meaningful clip from the Western Shane. Man has to be what he is, Johnny. Can't break the mold. But when he tries to stay detached to send Laura on her way because bad shit happens to people I care about, he finds that he can't. By the end of the comics, though, Logan has been dragged across the remains of the United States, stared down Ghost Rider thugs, weird subterranean monsters, Venom taking over a T-Rex, and a shady deal gone bad, and has steadfastly refused to engage. It isn't until he returns home with a briefcase full of cash to find his family murdered that he truly goes berserk. And here's where we get to the one difference that truly matters. In the film, Logan continues to fight and ultimately die to save Laura. While the fatal blow is dealt by Logan's own rage, it's his better nature that ultimately kills that rage. And with his final words, Logan tells Laura that she doesn't have to be what they made her. You don't be what they made you. Old Man Logan has a similar revelation. Once he's done murdering the crap out of all the inbred Hulks and the original Bruce Banner himself, he decides to get back into the hero game. After 50 years of not fighting, he's going to fight to make the world a better place again. And, in a symbolic gesture, he takes the last remaining baby Hulk along with him, using a member of the very family that murdered his own to get back into the fight. So back to the idea of these two versions of Logan being negative images of each other. On one hand, Old Man Logan refuses to kill, to be the weapon he was designed to be, until he discovers there's literally no escaping it. And on the other hand, Logan from the film is resigned to the fact that he is a weapon until he sees hope in a little girl clone of himself and tries to make sure she's not stuck with the same fate. Laura. No. No. Move. So yeah, in the comics, there are freaking dinosaurs and carnivorous mole people populating an apocalyptic wasteland where the hopeless masses prey to Thor's hammer, but the character arc of Logan himself is the most significant difference between the two. Be sure to let us know in the comments what other books and movies you want us to cover here, and be sure to subscribe to Cinefix for more What's the Difference. Okay, shut up, shut up, shut the f*** up!